Hello everyone and welcome back in my studio. If you're new here, my name is Adar and I am a stone sculptor. In this video today, I'm going to talk a little bit about this work of mine, which you might have seen featuring in a previous video. The idea for this work came while I was doing my PhD research, which was guided by an intent to understand sculpture, to define what it is, and to find how it could be applied to have a more impactful contribution to our society. The whole research was centered around the definition of sculpture that was given to us by Michelangelo, a definition that you probably heard me quoting before. Michelangelo said that sculpture is that which is done by means of removal. You can see that this definition is rather ambiguous and that Michelangelo didn't specify what tools would need to be applied to make this removal happen. Of course, the use of the hammer and chisel was implied, but I took advantage of this vague definition as an opportunity to search for alternative ways of removal of material and thus widen the spectrum of what sculpture can be. Now, I will not go further into detailing this research as I have published my full PhD defense in another video here on my channel. So back to this piece. So while I was researching for alternative carving methods, I came across this martial arts technique where they would repeatedly strike a stone with their bare hands in order to harden their bones. Now that was something that caught my attention because you see, us sculptors who are trained in the classical tradition generally say that we carve stone by hand. What we mean is that we use handheld tools like a hammer and chisel as opposed to more modern technologies such as computer-guided CNC milling machines. But strictly speaking, using a hammer and chisel doesn't mean carving by hand, does it? We're not literally using our hands to carve the stone. We use our hands to hold the tools by which we then carve the stone. But what about actual carving by hand? One could claim that the martial artists I just mentioned were actually using their hands to carve stone because I was sure that their action would have an impact on the shape of the stone, however imperceptible that might be. Now you might think that I'm crazy, that it's practically impossible to carve a sculpture by merely using bare hands. But in a previous video, I've pointed out how stone steps found in staircases of old buildings have been shaped by the millions of feet that stepped on them over the course of time. These examples prove that it's definitely possible to shape stone through seemingly irrelevant actions such as walking up and down the stairs. The only thing is that the time frame required is somewhat longer than it generally takes to carve a sculpture with the tools that are specifically designed for this purpose. By the way, a short side note. If a seemingly irrelevant action like a footstep, when repeated over time and in coordination with other millions of people, can change the shape of a stone, imagine what changes any other coordinated effort can bring into more malleable matters such as sociopolitical or environmental issues. Think about that. So anyway, as an experiment, I've been imitating the technique of the martial artists I mentioned before and have been regularly striking and slapping the stone with my bare hands for a couple of years now. Unfortunately, you're not here in the studio to feel the stone yourself, but this upper surface has become smoother than the rest. Each time I do these slapping sessions here in my studio, which generally last 5 to 10 minutes, afterwards there is always marble dust laying here around the stone. So I can positively confirm that there is material coming off the stone even after only five minutes of this action. Mind you, I am aware of the utopian aspect of this endeavor and that it would take me hundreds if not thousands of years to single-handedly change the shape of this stone so that it would be visible to the naked eye. But after all, why not engage in this seemingly futile and idealistic action? Perhaps the goal is not to shape the stone, but ourselves and to reconnect with a human pace that is getting lost. We see today how slow alternatives are being offered to balance the ever-increasing fast pace of our world. Things like slow food, slow travel, and so on and so on. You must know that nowadays the time required for making stone sculptures is dramatically reduced by the development of new technologies. Today, sculptures are made by machines and robots to speed up the carving process in order to satisfy the market's demand for a fast production. I am not against this development, on the contrary, I welcome every technological progress. But amid this dehumanized production race, I feel the necessity to slow down, to engage in a slow carving process, to counterbalance the fast pace that dominates our contemporary culture. So maybe we also need a slow sculpture movement 
to counterbalance that. And these slow alternatives to the fast lifestyle that now dominates our daily life are often not product driven, but are more experience driven. At first sight, it might not seem so, but this practice of slapping a stone with bare hands shares a lot of similarities with the more traditional way of carving stone with a hammer and chisel. If not from a time perspective, it definitely does so from a more spiritual level. You see, when one carves stone, at least when I do it, especially when using the point chisel for roughing out a block, one enters a flow that we might call a state of trance. The use of a hammer and a point chisel is characterized by a repetitive and regular strike. And the repetitiveness and the regularity of the stroke is transmitted to the body and mind through the physical movement and the sound generated by the hammer striking the chisel, striking the stone. And the monotonous and regular movement and sound function like a mantra. They help me achieve a flow that enable me to carry out this heavy duty work for hours, almost without any breaks. So I would really claim that the act of carving stone presents some elements of a meditative practice and I'm sure all you stone carvers out there can relate. And in a similar way, striking this stone with my bare hands puts me in that same mental state. There is the same repetition of movement, of sound, the vibrations of the impact on the hands and arms, the physical haptic contact with the stone, which is even more intense than striking the stone with a hammer and chisel. So whenever I do this exercise, I enter a hypnotic flow. My mind stops thinking about anything else and focuses on the rhythm, on the movement. It's like a breathing exercise that helps transcend daily matters. I generally do this for five to 10 minutes, but my longest session was about 40 minutes and time went by without me even realizing. I always joke that high-performing managers and CEOs nowadays swear by their yoga and us sculptors have stone carving. This is our meditative practice. We meditate when carving. By the way, I suggest you try it out. Take a stone, piece of rock, and just go at it. Only be careful not to hurt your hands. In any case, I hope you enjoyed this video, which was about a stone that is very dear to me. And it was not only about the stone, the sculpture, but it's also a performance that brings the attention to the effort required to make a sculpture. It's a reflection on the nature of stone carving, on the coexistence of old traditional methods and new ones. It questions what sculpture can be. But it also points out that amid all the technological progress that humanity is making, perhaps we still need to be in touch with our more primitive core. And most important of all, it's also about anything you make of it. So again, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think about it. I'm curious to hear your opinion. Just leave it in the comment section here below. Like, subscribe, you know the drill. My name is Adar and I'll see you next time.